Hi, I'm Andrew from Hypar. In this short video, I'll be showing you one of our newest features, integration with Grasshopper. This video will show you the basics of installation, and by the end, we'll publish our first Grasshopper function to Hypar. In Hypar, a workflow is a collection of functions that all talk to each other. Each function is responsible for some piece of logic controlling a system within your project. Up till now, functions were defined by writing code in C-sharp, but now you can write functions as Grasshopper scripts that seamlessly integrate into your Hypar workflows. In the Hypar interface, you can see the functions in your workflow in the panel on the left-hand side. Each function exposes its inputs, which you can interactively adjust and see the changing results in the model. First, let's look at how to install Hypar for Grasshopper. The easiest way to install Hypar is using the Yak package manager that's built into Rhino. Now, this feature is a little bit hidden in Rhino 6. You'll have to type test package manager in the command line, and even though it looks like it's not going to autocomplete, it will work. In Rhino 7 and later, this is a first class feature, and all you'll have to type is package manager. Once this loads, we'll see a list of available plugins to install. We'll go looking for Hypar, and we'll grab the latest version, which at the time of this recording is 1.0.27. We'll download and install. It's going to warn us, once it's done downloading, that we'll need to restart Rhino, but in fact, because Grasshopper hasn't been started yet, we can just click OK and launch Grasshopper. We're going to use the Hypar plugin to build a simple function that we can publish to Hypar. So with the Hypar plugin installed, you should now see a Hypar tab up here in your Grasshopper tabs. If you have text view, it'll be the name Hypar. Otherwise, you can switch to icon view and see the little pink H. So the first thing that we'll do is we want to describe our plugin so that Hypar knows what it's called and what it does. So we're going to grab the Hypar function setup component from the setup tab under Hypar, and we're going to just populate a quick name and description. So a uh, simple Hypar example, and we're going to set that to make a box. Um, one of the things you'll notice right away is that Hypar components have this little pink halo around them, um, which is a way for you to know that they're special and come from the Hypar library. So we're going to build a box where we're, we're going to control the width, depth, and height of that box. So let's start by building a rectangle to be the base of that box. So I'm going to instantiate a rectangle component. And just like I would in any normal Grasshopper script, I'm going to supply some sliders for x and y. I'm going to double click and type 50 to get a slider in the range from 0 to 100. And I'm going to name this one width. And I'm going to copy and paste it and name it depth. And just because I know I'm going to need a little later, I'll do copy and paste and add one called height. I'm going to plug this slider into x and this slider into y, and now I can parametrically control the size of this rectangle. And what I'd like to do is tell Hypar that these sliders are meant to be treated as inputs to my function. So I want them to show up in the function interface on the Hypar uh, website. So in order to do this, I'm going to go grab a function input component from setup. And the rule of thumb with this is you want one of these for every input. So rather than feeding multiple sliders in, we're going to make multiple copies of it. And we can connect this to an object that represents an input. For now, we're just going to use a slider. Later on, I'll show you how to use other kinds of inputs. And you'll plug the slider into O. And it recognizes that this is going to become a hyper range parameter. If you want, you can also plug this in to be uh, to use the output of this object as the input to your function, but that's actually unnecessary. Um, you can just leave it connected. That's sufficient so that Hypar knows that this is the input that you want to publish. And it will interpret the name from the nickname of the thing you've connected it to. So that input will be called width. If you want, you can also override that input by providing another value here and providing a description. Um, for now, we'll just leave that off. I'm going to copy and paste this. It turns red because it doesn't want any duplicate inputs, but if I plug this in, um, it, will, it will clean itself right up, and I'm going to do the same for height. And what we want to do next is make some geometry from this that Hypar can understand. So 
Hypar uses a system called Elements, which is our sort of open source geometry and BIM library um, that represents everything as a Hypar element. So for Hypar to be able to understand something, it has to be represented as an element. And in order to create an element in the Grasshopper plugin, we'll go to the Elements tab, grab the Construct Element component, and right off the bat, this doesn't do much. It doesn't have any inputs. But if you right click it, you can go find all of the element types that are currently loaded into your model that you can instantiate. So I'm going to create a mass. This will automatically populate the inputs to the component that correspond to the pieces of information necessary to create a mass. So I'm going to supply this rectangle as the mass or as the profile. I'm going to supply this value as the height. And now we have a mass and you can even see it in the 3D preview in your Rhino window. So the last thing we'll need to do to create a complete hyper function is actually tell the function to output this geometry back into the model. And for that, we're going to use a model output component, which is also found under setup. So model output will take a list of elements and then it will be mad at us until we supply it a name. So I'm going to call this mass. You can call it whatever you want. Just know that whatever name you give it is what other functions downstream will use to grab whatever geometry you've populated. So this is all you need to create a hyper function. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And then we're gonna go log into Hypar and upload this as a new function. I'm gonna launch a browser, go to Hypar. I'll log into my account. And I'm going to go to the Your Functions row, which you should see if you're a part of the Grasshopper beta or once we've actually launched this functionality. I'll go New Function, New Grasshopper Function, and this is where I can drag and drop the file that I just created. Sometimes this can take a second. It's actually reading your Grasshopper file and extracting all of the information about the model output, the name, the description, the inputs, everything we just created. Now it's loaded. Now I can publish it as a private function. Um, one thing to know is that these functions won't be visible to anyone else until you decide to take them public and we're ready to go. So now I can go into a workflow. I'm just gonna create a new workflow, a new blank workflow, and I'm gonna go look for my function. Simple hypar example was the one we created. I'm gonna click insert. And all of the things that I designated as inputs should show here, width, depth, and height. And it's going to now calculate that mass and drop it into the model. If I make a change here, it will recompute that mass. So this covers the basics of getting set up authoring a function for Hypar. In the following tutorials, we'll cover in more depth all of the advanced features of building Hypar functions.